All right, what's up my AP Calc champions? In this problem, we're gonna be going over this differential equation that's given here. dy over dx is equal to one half sine of pi over two times x times the square root of y plus seven. We're saying that y equals f of x is the particular solution to the differential equation with an initial condition f of one is equal to two. And it's defined for all real numbers. We're saying that a portion of the slope field for the differential equation is given below. Sketch the solution curve through the point one, two. Slope fields, what does that mean? So we know that the slope should be following the slope field and we're actually given a point one, two within the slope field that we can use to follow. This point is super important because it sort of solidifies where we should start our solution curve. You'll notice with these tick marks, you kind of just have to make your slope of the curve fit within the slope field as you're moving through it. And something else to point out is anytime you see that the slope field has this horizontal line like this, that means that we're changing from the slope increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. If I kind of zoom in a little bit, you know that as the slope is going through this point, it should go, it should look like this. Okay. And then I'm going to keep continuing it, making sure that it fits the slope of the slope field. Okay. Then we're going to do the same thing here on the other side like this. We can do that just for the other side of the point as well. So make sure the slope is pointing the direction you would expect it to. We hit another horizontal line in our slope field, so that means we're gonna be changing from increasing to decrease. Just keep having that slope match like that. And then, once again, just go through it like that, okay? These slope field problems aren't worth that many points, but you know, just make sure to look out for the things that I mentioned and then you can get that one point that I think this is worth. Moving on to Part B, it asks us to write an equation for the line tangent to the solution curve in part A at the point 1, 2, and then use the equation to approximate f of 0 0.8. We know that we want to write an equation for a line. There's typically two different equations for lines. There's y equals mx plus b, then there's y minus y1 is equal to mx minus x one. And since we're actually given a point here, I think we should probably use this second equation. The m in this case is our slope. So let's go ahead and actually find the slope of the curve at 1, 2, which is the point where that's being passed in. So a uh, good thing we have our derivative defined up here. So we have that dy for dx is equal to 1 half sine of pi over two times x times square root of y plus seven. So then we just go ahead and we plug in x equals one, y equals two from this point here. So dy over dx is equal to one half sine. This is just gonna be a one, so it's just gonna be pi over two times the square root of two plus seven. This is a non-calculator problem, so we should be able to solve for this ourselves is a good thing that under the square root we're just going to get nine very convenient so we have one half sine of pi over two times the square root of nine which is three so now we need to figure out what sine of pi over two is so hopefully you remember what your sine looks like so sine of zero is zero and then once we reach pi it's once again going to be zero so at pi over two, that's where we reach the maximum of our sine uh, graph, which is gonna be one. So it's gonna be one half times one times three is three over two. So our slope at that point is three over two. So uh, we can plug in that as our m within our slope function. So three over two, then x minus. So our x is gonna stay the same. That's just like a stand in. So that when if you're trying to approximate some value, you can plug that in for x, but our x1 is going to be an actual point within our curve, so that's going to be that 1. And then we're going to do the same thing over on the other side. Our y is going to stay the same. That's what we're going to be solving for when we plug in 0 0.8 for x. But then our y1 is going to be 2, because that's coming from our point 1, comma 2. So this is the equation. So now we want to approximate f of 0 0.8. So to do that, we say y minus 2 is equal to 3 halves 0 
minus one, all right? Then we simplify that a little bit to get y is equal to three halves minus 0 0.2 plus two, which is minus 0 0.6 over two plus two, which is 1.7. That is the final answer. I guess we have two answers here for this problem. We have equation first, and then we have, or we can even, we can even simplify it like this. Say y equals three halves x minus one plus two. So that can be our final answer. I'm sure you could leave it in this format. It just looks a little bit cleaner with uh, the y by itself. So that's the answer to part B. Let's go ahead and move on to part C. In this problem, it says it is known that f double prime of x is greater than zero for minus one is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to one. Is the approximation found in part B an overestimate or an underestimate for f of 0 0.8? Give a reason for your answer. You'll notice that there's a reason the problem told us this is our range. And the reason why is 0 0.8 is gonna fall within that range, right? We're being told that f double prime of x is greater than zero. So what does that mean? That means that f is going to be concave up. f is concave up on minus one is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to one. So then what does that tell us? So if it's gonna be concave up, so it's gonna look like this. Why is this important to us? Well, the reason it's important is because our tangent line for any point on this line is going to be underneath the curve, right? So if we take the tangent line anywhere, it's underneath the curve. So since the tangent line is underneath the curve, we're gonna say that the approximation we found is an underestimate. Since f is concave up on that range, the tangent line is an underestimate. That's all you have to say here. If, for example, it was less than zero, then that means our graph would have been concave up and our tangent lines would have been, you know, above what the actual value was. So in that case, it would have been an overestimate. But since it's greater than zero, it's a concave up, it's gonna be an underestimate. All right, moving on to problem D. It says use separation of variables to find y equals f of x, the particular solution to the differential equation, this here, with the initial condition f of one equals two. All right, cool. So we're being asked to use the separation of variables. So you'll notice that within our equation, we have dy and dx on one side, and then we have x and y on another side. And our separation of variables strategy is to separate the variables so that, that y is on one side and x is on the other side. So it's going to look something more like this, where we have y equals f of x. We can go ahead and start this out by multiplying both sides by dx. So now we no longer have dy over dx, we just have dy on one side. And then we have dx plus 7. Now we have our x and our dx on the right side, but now we still have this y on the other side, on the same side. So uh, we're going to want to divide both sides by the square root of y plus 7, so that now we have our y's on one side and our x's on the other side. So we get dy over the square root of y plus 7 is equal to 1 half sine of pi over 2x dx. All right, awesome. So now we have separated the variables out. Now, remember that we only want it in terms of y and x. So we have to get rid of these dy's and dx's somehow. The way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna take the integral of both sides like this. We're integrating the left side and we're integrating the right side to get it in terms of just y equals f of x. Okay, so we can rewrite the left side as dy times y plus seven to the negative one half power. Remember that a square root of like some variable is equal to that variable to the one half power. And then if you have it, if it's the denominator of a fraction, it becomes negative one half. So that's what we're kind of doing here to just make it a little bit easier to use the power rule. And then um, on the left side or on the right side, it's gonna be the same one half sine of pi over two x dx. So we'll deal with the right side in a little bit, but right now let's go ahead and integrate the left side. So uh, we're going to be just using power rule here. So we're going to be adding one to our power, and then we're going to be dividing it by the power plus one.
is going to be equal to y plus 7 to the 1 half power divided by minus 1 half plus 1 is equal to 1 half. So we can also just rewrite that as if we're dividing by 1 half, that's the same thing as multiplying by 2. So put that 2 out front like that. And then if we're taking something to the power of 1 half, that's the same thing as just taking the square root of it. So on the left side, we have taken the integral, and we now have it in terms of just y. So we have 2 times the square root of y plus 7. Awesome. So then let's go ahead and integrate the right side of our equation. So we can go ahead and take this 1 half out of the integral. This is just um, a constant and doesn't really need to be a part of it. So um, we can focus. Let me just move this down so that when we do integrate it, it'll be ready for us. So uh, we have 1 half sine of pi over 2x dx. Here we can use some substitution to sort of simplify this integral so that it's a little bit easier for us. So right now we have sine of pi over 2x. Um, we can go ahead and set some variable u equal to pi over 2x. We take the third derivative of both sides, we get du is equal to pi over 2 dx. If we wanted to solve for dx and replace this entire thing in terms of u, we can do du times 2 over pi is equal to dx. We just divided both sides by pi over 2. We can go ahead and say 1 half the integral of sine of, we're saying pi over 2x, we're setting that equal to u, so we can just say that's a u. And then we're saying dx is equal to 2 pi, 2 over pi du. So now we have it in terms of u, so it's a little bit simpler. You'll notice that we no longer have a complicated expression inside of our sine, so that we can go ahead and take the integral. We know what the integral of a sine is, so we can go ahead and just integrate that, and then we can use our substitution again to plug in for x instead of u. Once again, we have another constant out here, so we can just go ahead and take that out of the integral, like that. So now we just have sine of u du. Uh, these two are gonna cancel out, so we're gonna have one over pi out front. And then this is going to be equal to, the integral of sine of u with respect to u is equal to minus cosine of u. And then we can just multiply that by one over pi to get minus one over pi cosine of u and then plus c. And then we can go ahead and just plug u back into our integrated expression so that we get this in terms of x. So we're gonna say that what we took the integral of, of the left side is equal to minus one over pi cosine of pi over two x plus c, okay? Um, with this plus c, the constant of integration, um, you'll notice that I only have it on one side. You know, when I took the integral, when I took the integral of the left side, I didn't really add a constant. The reason why is these constants are sort of negligible. So I could have said something like plus uh, d or something, and then just subtract it to the other side. So then this entire thing is just going to be another constant of integration. We don't really care for it too much. So for that reason, we only need to have it on one side. All right. Um, next thing we need to do is we actually have to solve for a constant of integration. Okay, we can't just leave that as plus c. We need to figure out what c is. Uh, we're given that point x equals one, y equals two that we've been using throughout this entire problem. So we can go ahead and since we have everything in terms of just x and y, we can go ahead and plug for it and solve for c. So we get two times the square root of two plus seven is equal to minus one over pi cosine of pi over two times x, which is gonna be pi over two plus c. So we get two times the square root of nine. So that is six, two times three is equal to one minus one over pi cosine of pi over two c if you can remember what your cosine looks like it starts off at one at zero and then it dips down to zero at pi over two when we're taking cosine of pi over two that's going to be the same thing as just multiplying by zero and then plus c so this whole thing goes away so we get that six that c is equal to six Awesome, so now that we've solved for that, we can plug that into this equation here. So two times square root of y plus seven is equal to one minus one over pi cosine of pi over two x plus six. 
cool. So um, it asks for us to solve for y equals f of x. You'll notice we still have, you know, the y under a square root still being multiplied by 2. So we're going to want to isolate y on the left side. So we can go ahead and do that by dividing both sides by 2. So we get the left and right side divided by 2. And then we still have this square root plus 7. So, so we get y plus 7 is equal to, let me just copy this, it's equal to this value here. And then we still have that 7 out front, so we can go ahead and say y equals, I'm just going to copy it again. So you don't have to watch me just copy and paste the same numbers. Uh, and we're subtracting 7 from both sides. So it's going to be minus 7. So now we have finally gotten it in terms of y equals all the stuff on the right. So this would be our final answer. You can see we had to take a lot of steps here to get here. First, we had to separate our y's on one side and our x's on the other side. We had to take the integral of both sides. We had to solve for c. Um, and then we had to isolate y on one side to get our equation. So hopefully that makes sense for this AP calculus problem. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I'll get back to you. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.